So where are we going anyway? East Cork Motors. They're giving us a car for the rally. Feeling like I got some good to go. Should I jump? Should I stay? Or baby, should I go? Now you know that I'm falling for you. Oh baby, I'm falling for you. Saying I should not be looking down. Looking left, looking right, up down your hall. Listen lads, we're all guys here, we're all thinking the exact same thing. Who the fuck thought a Suzuki wagon or was a suitable car to drive all the way to Mongolia and back? Well that was Lloyd's idea, but we'll get to him after this. So this is Lloyd, and for some reason, he's our team leader. And this is me, Anthony, and I'm the camera guy. Next up, we have Evan. We're not really sure what Evan does. And lastly, we have Shane, our mechanic. And we are the Irish Reasonable Adventurers. There's definitely easier ways to clean a car. There was a car wash just over there. They are bad for the environment. Fossil foods. What was on there? Start the car there, let's go. Nowadays, travelling has become common to all sorts of people. Tourists, students, politicians, businessmen and others. A tourist, for example, is interested in seeing places and observing the ways of other people in the world. Students go on educational tours with the intention of enriching their knowledge. Everyone who travels long distances does so with some purpose. What was our purpose? That we were about to find out. Good. Not good at all. We're about three hours into France and the mad yaks are after spotting a problem underneath our car. The thing is pissing oil. If you ask me, I haven't a fuck clue what it is to be honest. They're talking about gears and mechanical stuff anyway, so we're gonna get Shane on it. We just pulled over to get some petrol. The boys just said, oh, there's some oil there. So if you have a look down here, you can see it's in there. Gearbox oil is pissing out. For months, I had researched the perfect car to do the rallying, and I'd settled on the Fiat Panda. But at the very last minute, I bought a completely different car. Now, I didn't know what to look for in this car, what problems it might have, which led to us on the side of the road three hours into the rally. It looks like we've blown the drive shaft seal. So we're gonna top up the gearbox and hope for the best. Serious action from the light man. Hurlenbacher. It's all different, but it's all the same. Very fucking cheap too. What, what can we carry, so? 
I suppose we don't want to get more than 12 cans. Or... You don't want to get more than 12 cans. <laughs> per person. <laughs> <laughs> this is a stab mixer. The Germans are known for their efficiency when they mix stuff. Uh, it stabs and mixes at the same time. Very fucking efficient. Well done, the Germans. You're my music, but you tear me to pieces. So where does it come from? The scene that keeps playing on repeat ignores the rule of thumb. Oh, where does it come from? Oh, where does it come from? All your emotions with your heart on your sleeve, it won't fade until you paint it black. Yeah. So, Anthony, what's the story here now today? What are we doing? So, one of the lads has decided to go missing. He's out there in the field somewhere, so we're doing a bit of a search and rescue mission. We're gonna fly over the fields find him somewhere. Here we go. <laughs> oh, what? Something there. Are you there? Really? Is that him? He's there! <laughs> 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 oh my god! <laughs> go, Lloyd, go! Playing the you can see straight away. Carts, a load of people looking at you kind of funny. Basically, they look like a lot of Kerry lads standing around the place doing not much of anything. <laughs> okay. Then we drive into this massive storm up these crazy ass mountains and it starts lashing down on top of us. Uh, we figured out Yorty has a bit of a leak because of all the cables we've got running in between all the doors and all that. So we've got this pair of jocks that we found. It belongs to no one. Uh, Evan robbed them in the shower back in Germany. And so we've closed the door and it's kind of keep it out. Yeah. It doesn't work, I'm still getting soaked. Well, the window's open. Well, the window's open because it kind of calmed down now a little bit. <laughs> but we're heading towards the haunted forest, the axe rupture at the moment. It's going to be absolute madness. Uh, it's going to get four spookies, I think, out of five spookies. Four out of five sure. spookies, that's a lot of spookies. So, if you ever wondered what makes this Romanian forest so spooky, our guess is because of the hornet's nest that we decided to park in. 
or because of the giant wolves that were circling our camp the entire night. But who knows? Was it you, yeah? There you go. Everybody, we gotta get that tent down real quick. We gotta go. And after a very spooky night of Lloyd acting possessed after a bottle of whiskey, we decided to install some new speakers because we didn't have enough already. It's just a little touch of fate, it'll be okay. It sure takes its precious time, but it's got right, and so have I. I turn my head to the focus wide and die at a time. I do not let you. So, we're here in the Romanian uh, forest jungle. Just like to give a big shout out to Lar and Tree Fools Coffee for sorting us out with our morning coffees. No updates, so we're just after waking up this morning. We actually had a bright, bright and early morning. Me and Shane went for a run in the woods. So feeling fresh, Lloyd is absolutely goosed. Um, but we're in the Romanian salt caves now at the moment. Licking the walls, it's definitely real salt. I'd say we're about 200 meters underground and we're about to go uh, boating in the water over there and we're going to have a race. There's five lay on it, winner takes all. It's about, uh, it's about Euro, 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 Euro 25. Yeah, so big stakes here. Evan and Shane versus Lloyd and Anthony. Ooh, serious business. The boys are way over there in a the boat. Harder to see when they're fucking eating our dust there in the background. We're gonna absolutely destroy them. Like, Irish reasonable boat race. <laughs> Here we go. Lloyd is absolutely useless. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually a bit embarrassing, like his cat. Three, two, one, and drop. Watch it, anyway. Go on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh. I know it looks like both of us are trying really hard to win this boat race, but I think we've really started to mature on this trip. <laughs> See you later, losers! Oh, this is a disaster. <laughs> How am I looking back there? Do well. Almost there. Oh, we're crashing, we're crashing. Go <laughs> on, get up there quick. I, fuck it, how do I turn? <laughs> yes. Fuck. Lost it. We won, lad. Oh, you forgot to touch the ball, like. Unbelievable. Oh, Jesus. He's gone back in. He's going for it. Oh, he's having a munch. Oh, quick, he's getting fucked. Oh, shit. Fuck this place anyway, getting out of here. Uh, well, we just come up the um, this lovely mountain road and we saw the boys parked up, so we said we'd pull over and see what the crack is. And the fiesta is uh, seen better days, so it looks like it's an electrical problem. And unfortunately, I'm not able to fix it. So. Blown to show you. Look at it there, it's all, it's all burnt inside there. That's what happens when you try and grind coffee on a hot day. We were trying to do some uh, ghetto coffee brewing at the side of the road, as you see. Was the grinder still going when, um, when it was smoking or did it blow? No, it was, uh, it was off when it started smoking. Like I'd say it just shorted against itself. Uh, we've got some coffee grinders. Well, that could be the end of our inverter. But right now we have some more important things to take care of, and that is having a wash. Ready to go? Let's Ready go for go. a swim. Let's do it. And then in for a quick dip in the whittle and then we're off this time. Whoa, here we go! 
dude just told us that all the piss and the shit out of the hotels get pumped in here, but uh, I don't believe him. It looks fine. It looks fine. <laughs> Trying to get a, a picture for one of our sponsors, Resumo, and I'm gonna stick it up right now. Class, what does it say? Uh, good luck. To your road from Bulgaria. Ah, wow. nice one, man. Thank Cheers. you. Cheers, Thank you. man. Thanks very much. Nice. Good luck. data can't check the maps we are somewhere along the coast of uh, the north side of turkey so along the black sea and we found a sign for camp marquesi we went down one path and basically it looks like a weed farm slash halting site where there's like giant dogs carrying full-blown chickens around their mouths <laughs> And we're definitely going to get murdered tonight as well, so I'm going to get it all on camera. <laughs> Enter forbidden. Okay. Camp Marchese, one star out of five on TripAdvisor, would not visit again. Dead chickens all around. <laughs> we have a change of events. After driving mindlessly down some narrow roads, we're after discovering a hotel in the middle of nowhere, and it's great. And we're all delighted. And we all have beds. It is pretty warm, I'm not going to lie. It's very warm here. Yeah. But it beats getting murdered by gypsies or whatever was going to happen down there. Like, that was not good. And there's a proper toilet the pro well. There's a proper toilet, you don't actually have to squat. <laughs> and and then, fucking funny <laughs> boys. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> You see, I'm with three star the young fellas here, but they don't have the technique. I grew up, <laughs> I grew up on the streets, I'll fight any I'll man. Fight any man. <laughs> oh, oh, that's great. Oh, oh, no. I'll get you next time, Hagerty. See this? The South Park coming in. <laughs> oh, oh, The only one who actually boxes and I completely missed it. Like. What, what do we do? So we could go we could go down this bit here. Yeah. Go down over this direction, like. Yeah, do it. Finger stuck at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh dark here, we go now. driving someone else's tracks is probably a bad idea. But you're sinking, alright? You are sinking a little bit. Get some momentum going. Oh no! Oh, that's definitely not gonna work. Yeah. Well that's that then I guess. Get up, get up, get up. Go, 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 go. 
Hello. <laughs> Hello. We're coming back down. <laughs> oh my god, this is gonna Oh, they're gonna rally us. We're gone anyway. Oh fuck. Oh shit. <laughs> Currently, early o'clock. It's my birthday. I'm 27 years old on this planet today. And we're getting on a hot air balloon. And we're going high in the sky. We're 10,000 feet in the air, standing in a basket that's strapped to a balloon. And as we look out over the hills of Cappadocia, we realise, with every place we pass, we leave something of ourselves behind. We stay there, even though we go away. And there are things in us that we can find again, only by going back to this place. It could be five, it could be 10, it could be 20 years time, but I look forward to finding myself again in Cappadocia. Them lads are bouncing off each other. They've got a massive rip on the side of their thing. This is bad. As a continuation of our birthday boy special day, we got our heads out of the clouds and took to the dirt roads of Turkey in search of that special something. Our aquatic instructor Hassan was nay too impressed with her extreme sporting skills, so we weren't long calling a halt to our big day out. But after her treating back to base and sampling the potent local alcoholic produce, Raki, we hit that sweet spot and we achieved exactly what we set out to do. It won't come up. What? It won't come up. Drink <laughs> <Big> water. <laughs> <laughs> if you drink right. something, you have something to help. I got this. I got this here. Yeah. All right. Relax. Oh. Six, seven, eight, nine, and eight. That'll do. That'll do. Oh. Testicular. Benzene Central Station around here in the Turkish mountains. This is it. We're heading towards the D915, aka Death Road.
rather send the puncture. Pleased to report that there's no death so far on the death road. <laughs> Starting to get a bit sketchy. Yeah, there's a bit of a drop off the edge, all right. Just stacking the old hair. Phone bail from the. I'll give you a hand. So here we decided to help these Turkish farmers loading their bales of hay. Mainly because they're blocking the road, but also because we're a sound bunch of lads. They said some things in Turkish and we replied with some things in English. Ah, uh, what a laugh. We had some crack. <laughs> So we're a waterfall shower, boy. Francis Alman. Irlanda. 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 Yo, yo, youth. We're here in. What's going on? Georgia. We're after landing into a reggae, reggae hostel and bar. And the lovely owner, Carolina, has bought us for a swim. Here she is. Yo, yo, Carolina <laughs> in the area. Myself, Lloyd and Anthony crossed the border by foot, leaving shame with customs in our valiant steed. We reflected on the time we spent in Europe. This was the final breath of sanity passing in our wake. The last sense of normality was seeping through our fingertips, unbeknownst to us at the time. This was the beginning of our journey. Morning, we made our way to Armenia, but first we got lost up the mountains driving on a road to nowhere. Yesterday we were in Georgia, today we are in Armenia. Yesterday we met a hostel owner called Carolina, and we thought she was really cool. In fact, we thought that she was so cool that we decided to bring her to Armenia. Hello! Hello. <laughs> Welcome to Armenia. It's lovely. Here we are in lovely Armenia. Most of what we've seen so far is landfill sites. <laughs> it is very lovely. Come on, Anto. New style selfie stick. <laughs> Ready? Oh, the guys! <laughs> the guys are getting angry. One of the big surprises about coming into Iran is that you're not allowed to wear shorts and you have to wear a t-shirt. It's like 45 degrees 
and I'm Irish. Pretty moist. <laughs> Just having a bad day. That lad's absolutely haggard, I know. <laughs> Even bits. We are the image of each other. I had a pair of those 50 floppies before, though. Quick update. We've just been pulled over by the police. Uh, they're mainly interested in Evan and his beard. He looks like a guy that's part of ISIS, so it's a big problem here in Iran. This is the second or the third time this has happened. Second time. Second time, yeah. Fourth Second. time we've got pulled over. In Fourth Iran. time that we've got pulled over all in Iran. Um, yeah. I wonder if they gave many presents. What's the story? Oh! We're all getting arrested, lads. Unbelievable. Well, Antoine, do you see what we're after doing is we're after changing the wires around and she's fucking flying it. Now, we simply get the end of this hatchet wire. Put it in here. Oh, We're in Iran just about to make the Turkmenistan border. Our compadre behind us is just after giving us some fresh fruit, passed it through the window at high speed. It's a very dangerous maneuver, may I add. We're going to return the favour by giving him some. Here he uh, comes, here he comes, here he comes. What's going on here, Shane? Um, we've got some beautiful new suspension arms. That, that's all cracked and broken, so we've got new ones, we're going to put them in. Should take about half an hour per side. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, ah. ah, thank this you! One is yours. Thank, thank you, you, you for much. bringing us over here, so you can yeah. hold on to this. <laughs> Maybe get a few tennis balls and you can keep yeah. practicing. Okay. Thanks for your keepsake. This keepsake from Ireland. Yeah. Irish, oh, whatever. Yeah. What Irish whatever. Irish hurling. It's Irish an Irish fighting stick. stick. I, Irish fighting stick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wish you a good rally and safe one. Thank you. Thank you. Check it out. Check it out. Turkmenistan. Uh, this place is a dictatorship if you didn't know and it's just like another world. When we were passing the border drones are illegal so they wrapped it up with chicken wire and we're not allowed over this until we get to the next border. The problem is they're illegal in Uzbekistan even more so it's probably going to get smashed up there unless we can hide it really well. We're just driving to the, the nearest town now and there's cameras all over the hills They've installed a GPS tracker in our car. And they tied up Evan's beard. Yeah, beards are illegal as well, so I have a little button thing going on. Not sure how long that's going to last, but... Should we press the red button? Let's do it. <laughs> Here we have huge marble buildings. It's all big white marble. No one's parked with the car parks. No 
whole place is pristine, is that like? Where is it really? Do they hide them all? They're all training camps. Turkmenistan is very weird. Nothing seems real here. We're going around with a GPS tracker in our car. We heard that the rooms in the hotels have cameras and they're bugged, so uh, I'm not sure what we can say. I'll play some clips of the buildings around the area. Everything is just white marble on the outside, but you can't go into any of the buildings because they're protected with soldiers. So it's very, very strange. It's, uh... There's been a serious chain of events on the last day that we had in Iran. We were heading towards the Turkmenistan border and we were on the main highway. We were about 200 kilometers away from the Turkmenistan border where we realized we were being followed by Grey Peugeot 405. The gentleman in the car was coming up from either side of us and he was holding a pair of religious beads over the steering wheel. When we realised that he was following us, we had to ditch him by like going off into a slip road that led us into a small town. And he knew the area really well by the looks of it because he quickly followed and caught up with us really fast. He had a quicker car so he sped up and got in front of us and tried to slow it down and tried to crash our car. We slowed down and got a bit behind him and done a U-turn and headed straight back to the main road as fast as we could and he quickly followed. There was a ton of people out in the street. We were skidding, going as fast as we could, revving the car. So was he. We near missed uh, a car on a roundabout because we couldn't stop. We were centimetres from hitting another car. Uh, and nobody did anything by the looks of it. There were no police around. We took a turn off on the roundabout and we ended up at a dead end road going through a farmyard in, in the middle of nowhere. It was like the worst case scenario really because if he followed us down that way, if he knew that we went down that way, he could have killed us. So luckily, he didn't see us take the turn and he went straight through the roundabout. We kind of hid out in the farmyard for a bit and tried to find a separate way to the border. And we used maps.me and it, it gave us another direction over some mountains up to another border into Turkmenistan. But unfortunately, it was actually a military outpost and uh, we weren't allowed to go that way. We had to show our passports or care ID and I had an AK-47 pointed at my face from 20 centimetres away from the cheekbone. They told us to go back to the small town that we were chased in, which was the last thing that we wanted to do. But luckily at the time it was getting dark, so our car was not as identifiable as it was during the day. Uh, we made it back onto the highway and we tore off to Turkmenistan from there. I don't want to put that as one of like the things that ruins our trip to Iran because Iran was by far one of the greatest experiences that we all had and the people were great and it's just a few people that give it a bad name and they're the people that give it the reputation that it has that people think it's dangerous and it's really just a bad few but yeah, so we're in Turkmenistan now. All knowledge it just seems like a fun city though. Like there's a couple of fake buildings around and stuff. Everything's made out of marble on the outside and it just looks like utter shit on the inside. But um, alcohol is legal. That's a major plus after being off the booze for five days in Iran. I know five days is not a long time, but we needed it after that. Yeah, and that's it. Let the journey continue. This is what we signed up for. We knew about the dangers before we signed up for the Mongol rally. And this is it. So rock, rock on back through this village, take the entrance to the, the roundabout that we just took, and blow on. Well, we could, as soon as we get to the village, stop and just ask someone where it's in place. I think we should get a fucking escort ready, though. I forgot to mention in the last video, but four days prior to us being chased here in Iran, ISIS put out a message to kill all non-believers and four cyclists were killed on the Premier Highways. They were run over and stabbed. So, as you can guess, we are already pretty on edge. I don't think they'll give a fuck about the police, to be honest with you, I think we should just go for it. We just had a great night drinking back on the sesh. We just gotta get the lads there now because we need to get down for breakfast. We have about 10 minutes. Hopefully they're almost ready, but knowing them, they're not. 
the door open. Oh, there they are. <laughs> <laughs> Let's break breakfast in ten minutes whenever you're ready. Whenever you're ready. <laughs> <laughs> Try and reverse again if it doesn't work, try and go forward. If that doesn't really work, try and go support. sideways. And then go upside down. I'd like to bring your attention to the ridiculous hats that the lads are currently sporting. They are called Papakas. There's an old saying, if you find a man's papaka in the wild, nobody would dare touch it, for there would be a serious reason a man would leave his papaka behind. Um, right, so we're here at the gates of hell in Turkmenistan. Um, so we just pulled in off, um, off the main road, we had to get winched out of the sand, um, and it's been a pretty, pretty intense trip to get here so far. A um, little gentleman on a, a motorbike led the way. And uh, we managed to get here safely anyway, so if you look to the right, here's the, um, the gate. Basically a burning gas crater that's been burning for the last, um, the last 50 years with natural gas seeping, seeping out from the earth. So we're just uh, saddled up here, we have a bit of dinner cooking, and uh, in the meanwhile, we're going to send a lemon, because we have no more slitters, one lemon into the gates of hell. This is for Era. Here we go. Yes, my! <laughs> it's definitely one of the most epic things I've ever seen. Yeah, it's pretty yeah, fucking exactly. intense. Over that side, you can't even stand because it's downwind and uh, the heat is absolutely immense. Like, it's ridiculous. And the hats don't help either. No. <laughs> <laughs> they look cool. Though. That's amazing. <laughs> you look a boy, man. <laughs> it's the album cover. Good morning. We're just leaving Dushan Bay. Anto's safely navigating south of there. Top there man, Anto. We're in a convoy of about six cars, give or take, depending on where people are. And we're heading for the Premier Highway, and it's going to be absolutely unbelievable. Like five kilometers up in the air, crazy roads, pure madness. <gasps> Morning, Evan. <gasps> Lloyd, bye. Lloyd's flat out cleaning himself as he does. <laughs> <laughs> he's only putting it on for the camera, he's a filthy animal. Oh, he's oh, just yeah. doing it, special <laughs> occasions only. It's a special kind of feeling when everything you own is with you in one bag. You only have a few pairs of pants and t-shirts, so getting dressed each day is an easy task. It seems like the more that we have, the more that we're weighed down. Tajikistan! <laughs> Tajikistan! You need shelter, food, and you need water. That's about it. Mongol rally flag, show the ralliers where it's at. <laughs> Actually a pair of Anto's dirty jocks, pretty minion. Onion incoming to Afghanistan. <laughs> Have a 
Let's suck up my pie! Just uh, stop in the military there and um, I'm not wearing any pants. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the state of this. We shouldn't have to put up with this now. <laughs> we shall. Get your, get your, get, get my sunglasses away from your underpants. Trust Anthony in the strict Muslim area where having your shoulders out is a bit of a um, bit of an issue. Put like them to, on go, go through the border crossing so with no jocks, and you're still but, just sitting here laughing about it, like. We just, we'll we just turn him over to the soldier now. Yeah, they can have like, their way with him. We should, yeah, we should just bring him over and just point at Anto until he gets taken away. Like. Oh, God, good. Do you want to see an example of some proper engineering? Yeah. See that? That's the suspension mounting. We hit a bit of a bump and it's uh, it's fucked, basically. We're, we're going to strap it together and try and fucking hope that it pulls itself back down and then um, get some mechanic and get it welded. That's basically the only option. Brand new. Holding up. Sure then? Yeah. Nice. It's actually probably stronger than it was before, like this fucking shitty ass welding. Poor job. Alright, let's go see what happens. So just an update from today. We got our suspension mount welded by a mechanic, but um he just did a bit of a cowboy job in it and it's just after kind of making matters worse. We're on the way up the premieres right now, we have to find another mechanics and hopefully they'll be able to sort it out. They have another well machine here, so fingers crossed. I reckon what's going to happen here is we're going to absolutely fuck it up completely. We'd been lulled into a false sense of security. Up until now, our chariot had been an indestructible force, an object of sheer perseverance and will. To see her seriously wounded for a second time, one had to wonder, was this one fatal? I wish I could say that our second welder looked like a pro, but his lack of any appropriate equipment at all, up to and including welding goggles, <laughs> left much to the imagination. <laughs> We reached 4,000 meters. I started tripping balls. I stopped the car and it felt like I was still moving, but backwards. And the road, the road just started stretching. It started getting longer. And I just didn't know what was happening. It was just really trippy. And then I just got a really bad headache. And now my nose is pissing blood. How's your altitude? Sickness. It's actually making me stronger. My body is an efficient machine at this stage. No nosebleeds, no headaches. All is well. Just had a big bowl of sweet corn and peas and I'm on top of the world. As you can see, I'm the same. I'm actually totally <laughs> healthy. <laughs> so, our suspension burst twice and uh, we strapped it back together, got some dodgy welding done and then got to this little town in Tajikistan, the mountains somewhere. Gave it to this guy last night, this guy here. And if you see here, he's put a massive plate on it. And that is definitely, that is definitely ah. solid and it's not gonna fall apart again. So we're gonna get back on the road, head for Kyrgyzstan and yeah, all good. Nice one, China. Cool, isn't it? Yeah. It's a pretty cool spot. How we get on, lads? Dipping away, right? Chilling in the yard. <laughs> Our first yurt. First of many. Yes, we've been welcomed in by this lady and her family. For some yak milk. There's some. Um, Yak cheese. Some yak cheese. Yeah. Yak butter. Tastes like sour cream. It's really good. Mmm. Yeah. Mmm. Yes. Mm. Lovely. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Ah. 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 
Fucking cunt. <laughs> Half an hour ago we were just driving along the mountains and the lads got this really strong smell of weed so they stopped the car immediately and ever since then they've just been like searching the hills looking for this mysterious weed plant that definitely doesn't exist but it's the funniest sight ever like three Irish lads just fucking rummaging around the hills We're at the Kazakhstan border and we have all the cars trying to cut in. Stow dollar. The only way we're letting them in is if they give us free beer or money. This beer, this beer. That's beer. It's nice okay. beer, it's nice beer. All right, I right. A beer and, and a melon. melon. All right, all right. <laughs> we need, we need, we need. It's a very big melon. Free melon, free beer, free water, and we just have to let them go in front of us in the queue. Okay, quick question. What's better than finding Evan sitting in airplane seats welded to the roof of a car driving 100 kilometers an hour down the road? <laughs> Check out this. Chunky, chunky Russian weed. <laughs> we just harvest a big old crop, put it on the top of the car. Tear up. What you got yourself there, Evan? A couple of tasty notes, boy. Look at the size of him. How are you getting on, B? Okay. <laughs> Some lovely trees. Ridiculous amount of weed here. What are you boys doing? <laughs> the man across the road said to us that in the next town there's cops. If they find us, they're going to arrest us. That's a bit of shit. It
Things have got a little simple this morning. Turn right here now after the cow. What do you mean you didn't expect her to turn right after the cow? You fucking grew up in Ireland. Welcome to uh, welcome to Evan and Shane's cooking show. Jingles. See these beautiful cheese we got here in Mongolia? Freshly imported from the Mongolia. A loaf of bread, here's one that we made earlier. <laughs> then you select the perfect slice. Nice one here, good thickness, good consistency, not too stale. A little bit, and, uh, stale. Little bit stale, yeah. A little bit of a crunch to it. Uh, you get the cheese. Carefully unwrap your cheese. Which we've uh, also prepared earlier. And this is the clinical part here. It's the, the placement of the cheese on the slice of bread. So you have to see if it's better laterally or longitude. Oh, well, it's a square. Uh, it actually doesn't matter which way you put it on. Shane makes it a bit different than I do, you see. He's gonna try, you, you put another slice over, do you? I do, yeah, I'll have yeah. a second slice. He'll have a second slice, because he's, um, he's a greedy bastard, greedy, right? Yeah. I like to uh, fold it over like this. You get the flip going, nice, good, oh no, oh, oh no, it's all gone wrong. <laughs> oh yeah. Did we forget to mention that Evan has no driver's license and has absolutely no idea how to drive? Oh, yes. Fuck, this man can't drive at all! There's a reason we said don't put Mark Twain once said, 20 years from now you will be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than by the ones you did. So throw off the bow lines, sail away from the safe harbour, catch the trade winds in your sails, explore, dream, discover. after damaging way too many wheels so we upgraded our driver hey she goes by the name of Kate and her record at the moment is no punctures so uh, yeah an absolute upgrade it's gonna be phenomenal and I haven't shat myself in the car she hasn't shat herself like Lloyd which is <laughs> he's after shitting himself three times now uh, Evan's calling me at the moment let's see what he's doing what's the crack can you pass <laughs> Could you pass me up some ski goggles, please? Some ski goggles? <laughs> yes, please, sir. Woo! Right, lads, picture the scene. You're sitting on a fella's lap, driving a Chikachenko. You're on steering, he's on pedals. Windscreen smashed, and there's 20 people on the roof. Okay, who was it? For shame, for shame, for shame, for shame. Oh man, you should have seen it, like, look, there's no other rocks. There's no one who's seen this rock when you're headed out that window. That's not the point, that's the other part. That's a ball drop, he gets a ball drop oh, for that. I'm going to no, no, no! I, yeah, no, 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 I just want to get the trophy at the end. Yeah. I get a ball drop in this car. No, he gets a ball drop because that was fucking terrible. Yeah. You get a ball drop, doesn't matter which car you're in. You need the ball drop, it's the ball drop, I'll and it goes on the list. I'll accept the ball drop. So normally what happens is you get gas inside underneath the tyre, you light it up, you catch the fire, it expands and it pushes it back on the beam. That did not pop. It didn't work at all. Right? It's, it's, it's already down. <laughs> Jack it up for fucking. Uh, oh, there's a bit of a problem. <laughs> it's uh, it's kind of lying on the jacks. We might need everyone to help lift it up. <laughs> Sam, you fucked the jack! Yeah, I want to 
That was after Uzbekistan and Pioneer. As a if, I, if I were you, I'd just fucking take it. I, I'd just take it and fucking shove it back on the pipe. Be careful doing that, guys. You're going to take my fucking head off. Uh, look at this. It's the exhaust. It's falling off. So here I am under the Fiat CQ Tenko again. <laughs> going to try to stick it back on. If it works, great. If it doesn't, fuck it. Right. Absolute socks on the dirt roads in Mongolia. Woo! Let's go! We're chasing the French. They're up ahead there somewhere in the dust. So we're gonna launch this yogurt right after them. Basically, the fuel pump's not working. Um, we've taken the fuel pump out of the fuel tank. The fuel pump works. We're, there doesn't seem to be any power going to it, so we're trying to wire it directly. But again, there doesn't seem to be any power going to it. So I'm not quite sure where we're going from here, but we're gonna fucking try and sort Keep on trekking. We'll keep on trying. That's all we do. I knew I'd have to do this. Oh shit! We did it out. Thank you to our sponsors, Carrick Designs, or Carl's Cove, Electric Soul, and the rest of the boys. We're here at the Genghis Khan, or the Chinggis Khan statue. The man had 500 secondary wives, so we've come to pay our respects. Inside of him! Huge. Buddy over here, <laughs> we chilling. He doesn't look like he's about to rip my head off at all. What's his name, Shane? Dave. Dave. Dave the Eagle. And after a seven-hour border crossing into Russia, we made it, and it was time to go to the finish. To go to the finish line, ah! our last convoy. Woohoo! T-minus 10 minutes we're going to be on the way to the line by 200k to go, yes my!
One of the main dilemmas that's pretty common to a lot of people who are getting older is the idea that maybe there's a finish line. That maybe there's a time in your life where you gotta slow down and stop. What this experience has taught me is that, yeah, there is a finish line. Then there's another finish line. And another finish line. And another finish line after that. You just gotta find the race and take part.